Hello everyone, uh, this is Zufar and I'm sorry for a 12 minutes delay uh, because again as I wrote um, it's you know it's not easy to get back to studio but I looked at the people uh, who came, you folks, all of you, again I hope we'll have a good time um, spending together and I see Karen, I see Steve I, uh, and, uh, uh, and Barbara so those who've been following me before been so patient uh, waiting for me for almost uh, two months when I when I've been away and I'm glad that I'm back to my studio of course it's great to be in my studio and uh, setting up all tripods and everything uh, which I could uh, which I've been using before now is all disassembled and I'm actually uh, planning to uh, rent special studio space and I just been uh, looking with a realtor at uh, at special office. But anyways, uh, thank you uh, for being patient. Thank you for waiting for me and welcome back. So you won't uh, see my face, but uh, Karen, so you've seen me in Atlanta just like a week, a little over a week ago. And uh, many of you have seen me before on my YouTube. And, uh, you know, I, I don't feel that there is a lot uh, important things <laughs> of course there is a good interaction when it's face to face uh, but anyways uh, let's see what we're um, going to paint today that will be this uh, bush of lilacs I took this picture in the morning and then afternoon I did some video and I posted that on Facebook and many of you have probably seen that but let me uh, show that uh, video for you again and uh, so that was my promo uh, video what Hello I really everyone, um, Zufar, uh, like confidentartist it's uh, that it's, it's very close to my home. Uh, it was windy for over two weeks. Uh, we had some rains, it was cool and so on. And you can hear my voice here. I hope it's not too uh, loud. And uh, again, look at my uh, serious face. So, but anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say that uh, when you are, uh, we are uh, planning, not planning, uh, kind of like training uh, to paint, we don't need quite often to go to uh, quite far to find a subject uh, to work with. So, uh, what's great is uh, about this place, which is right uh, back of my backyard. It's kind of very, very narrow passage. And, uh, that's where the lilac tree grows very well. So, um, and when day is sunny, just put some maybe buzz on the table, put some cloth, and a couple of apples, and you have a, a still life. Still life, it's not always boring, uh, quite often it's uh, very exciting uh, because you see a lot of color variety. And when you start painting, if you will look at it as an artist, you will definitely. Uh, will explore a lot of nuances which are important um, and if we're uh, going uh, further so this is what will be our setup today I will not be able to show you my palette and I promise I'll be working with the limited palette uh, Phil Stark one of the art educators I've seen his uh, video um, like couple of days ago and he was talking about the limited palette and I thought hmm, since we're trying quite often not to use green to mix greens and we have here greens so what how that will would work and with yellows uh, one of yellows would be enough and uh, again in this particular uh, view there is no much of um, kind of like a reds of course there is a purple in and then of course red can be uh, used and mixed for uh, shadow areas and so on like a, like almost the black areas but uh, anyways let's uh, start standardly again today's uh, tutorial is generally to get back to shape uh, shape for me as well uh, because for me it's also technology um, kind of dependent process as well I'm back to my studio finishing my winter uh, workshop and tomorrow I have my videographer um, uh, visit to my studio and we're going to uh, see how we can deliver better uh, uh, videos uh, work more efficiently if anything launched that is to be launched in time so anyway um, nice view what would we uh, do Oh yes, I also was uh, planning to talk a little about a uh, visit to Atlanta and uh, I don't have uh, d downloaded uh, this video uh, to show it to you, but you can see that on Facebook and I think I will 
I'll put this uh, short video clip on uh, YouTube as well. And uh, Atlanta was uh, gorgeous. It was beautiful. Uh, great people, good support, a uh, new place. And um, unfortunately, it's you cannot people cannot apply to that event. It's invitational, which makes it very special. Olmsted Plein Air in, Invitational Opai or Opay. So that's the title of it. I really loved it. Uh, good sales and um, didn't get any awards uh, at this at this time, but I got uh, when I've been there uh, previously. Uh, special prize from uh, Atlanta History Center, which is great place with uh, park, with garden, uh, with uh, old mansion and farm, and of course the museum part is excellent as well. And um, and before that, I went to uh, Florida, and I, there is another invitational event, which is a Forgotten Coast um, Invitational. I uh, have not been invited there um, yet. Maybe I've been, but maybe I missed email or something. That happens sometimes as well. Uh, but I went to St. George Island Paint Out. Um, it's it's good event. Uh, it's I think it was second or, second or third. I think, yes, that was second year since they opened. And I was curious uh, to see that area of Florida, which is close to Alabama uh, and close to Alabama. Uh, coast at the same time of course last year they had a hurricane which destroyed Apalachicola and uh, surroundings I've seen a lot of like number of buildings which are still under restoration or some of them not been touched uh, to restore yet uh, but really love that area and I hope to paint there uh, sometimes what's good about that place if you ever think um, find it uh, St. George uh, Island paint out um, and if they do it next year, I hope they do, um, you may want to uh, join. And I think that goes by recommendations a lot. You will need to submit your portfolio and uh, there is no commission uh, charge, which was a great thing. All sales went 100% to artists. So thanks for organizers who did, did not charge anything. And before I start drawing, let me see Barbara, Joan. Uh, Maria Dolores, you're all back. I'm so happy to see you all here. That's great. So um, let's work on our sketch. And when I work on my uh, like canvas panel and it's five by seven, I really loved it. At first I thought it's a little too small, but uh, for field studies, for quick studies, that's uh, just amazing. But anyways, before that, I like to do a sketch. Uh, usually I do a uh, four step um, like a kind of approach when the painting which I'm going to work on is large enough and any mistakes in composition or color choice could be quite time and uh, inspiration wise costly so but uh, since our goal is to work on this little one I will give you kind of hybrid uh, study it's first of course my approach is uh, to define uh, lines and I will I try at least I need to start with something uh, with some uh, borders of my future like, canvas. If something's wrong, I can change uh, like position from vertical to horizontal and maybe to go to square format is if I want, but I need to start with something and that would work. Second, um, what I like on my, um, in this case photograph and if I went to paint at like 8 30 in the morning um, I would have this view over there I like um, I like of course obviously some like light here big contrast and color wise and of course I have a lilac tree it's not a perfect shape and uh, of course you have a choice to draw it or and paint it as realistically as you can or you can do some little changes because you see there are some trees in the background. I can modify them and then I can show more transparency of this lilac uh, bush or lilac tree, which is relatively small and kind of uh, half transparent. So um, like my bigger shapes maybe here would be this one. I like light effect, like contour against the uh, sunlight effect here, a few uh, branches hanging and um, that gives some sort of good shape to my lilac tree and also in fact i like the way how these the branches come and um, 
and then I have here um, fence and the foreground of the fence is in shadow which is excellent so kind of they have this almost chevron like a check mark actually and um, that's kind of I think it's strong uh, shape and there is another shadow so that's my kind of like a bigger shapes let me uh, do some shades I mean uh, start shading them because I really want to uh, get the right values of course in this case if I squint and, and I look sky actually is quite dark here on photographs it looked darker always uh, in reality it's uh, shinier and lighter and um, I think this area is the most light and then um, so I kind of like it. I think this is my grass which is a little darker and um, this my darkest dark could be shadow in this corner of my yard and then a tree behind lilac tree is quite dark as well and you know it's kind of getting lost here it's really hard to say what shape is here but I need to do some sort of definition of this area I hope everyone can hear me well enough and uh, uh, Maria Dolores I'm reading your message yes I'm also glad to be uh, back and um, I will have a full setup for my online tutorials uh, better once I'm back to uh, to work on my courses and again I'm going to start working and finishing yes in fact finishing uh, my winter course uh, after I go to uh, to Chisip Chisipic Fine Arts Studio and I'm going to do demo there uh, Wednesday uh, not Wednesday uh, Saturday and uh, that will be I think closer to the end five to seven and and the uh, Hayo uh, you, many of you probably know uh, this uh, wonderful lady who uh, manages uh, the studio a very energetic good artist who brings is going to bring artists uh, this year to uh, Russia as well with another Russian artist not with another with with Russian artist Vlad Yelisev and he will uh, teach uh, he will teach watercolor and she will be teaching oil so you know this gets more complex i need to break it to uh, kind of some bigger shapes and of course i'm not going to draw any uh, flowers at this time unless i wish to have some sort of design i can kind of mark them if that helps me at least i'm you know what this will work even if let's say you decided that you will do drawing and then our dra next drawing is absolutely different it warms up uh, not only hands but also uh, our eye uh, hand coordination um, that's of course very important uh, in surgeons you could hear from them a lot how important is that of course uh, their mistakes cannot be uh, so easily corrected as artists mistakes could be like if any wrong cut is done that's uh, a that's something which could be rather tragic uh, because that will lead to bleed and so on hope you can see a uh, well and uh, every time when I work I try to do some uh, break and to see uh, how things are going and uh, I'm glad that I'm talking so that's not actually easy talking and uh, at the same time but I squint maybe uh, for sky I need to give more the value the darker value and uh, when I squint I still see that my bush in uh, on photograph or let's say that's what we see there is darker 
then I have it on my drawing. I will try, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I will try to get the value here uh, as close as possible because this is for me a way of of evaluating and when we work we evaluate constantly um, value color texture and everything so why not to do that uh, on while we work on paper uh, rather than uh, when we work on canvas with with uh, messy I would say um, oh yeah so this of course this is very light as well with messy medium media as, as uh, all oil paints you know when I do recording of my drawing and painting in advance that my talk is much better because now I try in my brain to juggle uh, two things at once I'm not going too much to focus on this line that's the edge of the roof of my house what I because I will rather kind of hide it because strong lines they attract a lot of attention and that will start competing uh, for attention with a focal point my focal point is all here in this kind of triangle like and also uh, with a purple and green so that will expand this area not much of interesting here not much of interesting here and this uh, corner obviously is not something where I want to pull uh, your attention generally um, I think I like how this looks like and if I place my objects uh, this way on my canvas that should be uh, good enough and uh, it's not absolutely perpendicular so my tripod <laughs> um, after a long drive to Florida and uh, Atlanta it was missing uh, one little part which I need to find so I've been using another tripod and that is why so the angle is not as perfect as I usually try to make it so um, uh, you will not be able to see today uh, my palette and I'll be using a limited limited uh, amount of tools uh, in this case so I will be using uh, the dagger brush I cleaned it yeah, after travel then I'll use a thin brush just for correction because canvas is small if I need to do any let's say branches or something this would be helpful even though I can do everything with one brush and also I'll take a tiny uh, flat in case I need to do let's say um, fans and uh, maybe some like flat areas maybe grass like uh, directional uh, brush strokes because uh, the dagger brush can give me like two spontaneous if I want to have more of order I'd rather work with a with a flat brush so I'll be using uh, medium and that's uh, Galkit and Galkit and uh, Gamzol uh, one to one and also in my palette I'll be using um, lemon uh, yellow actually maybe it's two um, yeah, yes and then I'll be using all uh, crimson I'll be using also hey, the ultramarine blue and also I have a um, kind of cool light green I'll be using that uh, because uh, painting and working on uh, painting lilacs it's just impossible not to use it it's a, like a turquoise green um, that type of like turquoise like cobalt that kind of paint and uh, and I think I'll be using maybe some like burnt sienna or something where I need to mix a few colors together so um, as usually I will be uh, I will tell my canvas I feel that I want to do so and that also uh, prepares surface and also warms up my uh, hands okay, sorry for the noise and I'll apply it as I was showing before with a small amount of paper towel and sometimes just moving it it um, can be uh, from my palette to my canvas could be problematic if anything but you know I'll be you I'll, I'll do it like with my brush you may choose whatever you like most 
course I like when there is some sort of a texture already applied and uh, you know but it's not always uh, like handy and on top I think I will um, in this case it's all cool there I'll use my um, ultramarine blue and of course of course I'll be using a uh, white of course and um, I will apply a bit of blue on top so you know toning of canvas it doesn't have to be always just like monochromatic just with one color it doesn't have to be so um, I'll use a little bit of medium to spread the sky is relatively uh, flat so um, I don't want to really make it like more, uh, getting more of texture over it. So it's 7.33 now and um, we'll start uh, working. So how I will start, maybe I'll take my uh, dagger brush as I like, or uh, as many people work with just like a, with a round, uh, little size, small size, uh, paint of course you all know I love uh, oil pastel and if you want we'll follow tradition so either choice is uh, is good so if I use my if I use my uh, oil pastel I love bronze one it's kind of gray warm gray color and I have my drawing I just will uh, pass my drawing Okay, I mean, I will transfer it. Because all findings which you get on our drawing is uh, are important. One of the mistakes, I think I mentioned that before, sometimes people find excellent composition on their drawing and then they start uh, working on their canvas without using them. So they lose those proportions or dimensions which looked great and then it's too late. I guess we get all so excited at times that we lose track of uh, what's really happening on canvas. Um, it was, it sometimes just feels that I tested, I can do it and that's it. No, that's, uh, it happened. It's not always guaranteed a result that uh, next time you can do it. Of course, it grows our confidence. That is why I think lack of confidence is, is bad. But again, confidence uh, is built on skills. And if skills are great, that's you feel more comfortable to start work. But when you work, you still, still stay focused. So I think that's uh, good enough uh, for uh, to start and let's see of course it's as always it's better to take a uh, bigger uh, value relations and today I'm not going to use my I'm not going to use my um, greens just like uh, primary colors and even my blues I'm not going to use a whole variety what I'm going to do I'll be using Let's say if I need to create brown, all these three colors together will work great. And in this uh, kind of a shadow, which we have here, it's almost kind of black. So I mixed ultramarine with uh, yellow, uh, lemon, cadmium lemon. And also, of course, uh, of the, the um, with my red you know it's so easy to kind of lose color a color clarity I would call it So 
so a little struggle but uh, that was my intention to struggle a little, a little bit uh, with uh, working just with limited palette and when you work with limited palette in studio specifically that's fine um, and especially if you are doing uh, kind of uh, studying not working of course on uh, towards the bigger artwork let's say if you are going to paint like large canvas and you'll be using full palette why your field study should be done with limited now we do this exercise specifically just to explore um, let's say how greens can be uh, mixed and if I need to do brown uh, how different will be my brown when I use those three primary which is supposed to give me quite desaturated kind of grayish color versus uh, the real uh, regular brown and then kind of or with the rage shade as a burnt sienna or anything else uh, I mean any other so now I will you know even though I have temptation to leave it like this uh, but you know value wise it's probably correct to what I see on my photograph it's close enough it's lighter actually I see on my video but in reality my uh, yellow I mean uh, this grass is almost kind of greenish yellow it's in reality it's much uh, darker I think uh, this yellow I mean this green which I'm using now is quite almost like electric I need to mute it it's too crazily um, too crazily bright I would say too yellow okay so at least I start with some corner and I'm not as you see I'm not trying to work on details even though it looks uh, maybe good enough already but I still let's do here a little cooler color uh, but I need I'm, yeah I, I'm really struggling <laughs> uh, with the temptation to start working on this corner which I'm not supposed to because because uh, each stage of work has its own goals let's say when I see uh, on shadow here a variety of colors like three four five and I did the mix and I'm trying to kind of expand it you know I still will try to not to uh, go with more with this kind of grayish um, mix which I just created now maybe just a little correction if value wise is or the color wise is wrong but I will not go uh, through variety if maximum variety if I'm going to do it will be no more than two because I think and uh, that looks good and now I will work on like on big mass of this tree you can see the right side of it it has a more of a kind of a kind of a darker and cooler color and here we have a lot of of course transparent areas and yeah. and uh, here I think I'll be using at one point uh, that like almost like turquoise but you know uh, it says I mean it's it's paint from Russia <laughs> I don't think it's something like a very very secret one uh, paint it's uh, widely used by Russian artists and um, I think that's excellent color to work on something like a sage like like in on plains of Arizona or New Mexico just these two colors mm. you know when you 
when we all uh, work we of course uh, we use uh, paint and we create on our palette some sort of mess gets built up but if you find the way how you um, create mixes and then uh, reuse them and what's uh, more important especially for uh, artists who are still kind of uh, learning how to uh, manage uh, their palette and so on uh, it's quite often if we mix small amounts of paint like too small that leads quite often that we have stains on on our palette but uh, there is no uh, there is no use uh, of, of I mean there are no leftovers and um, if we kind of have extra uh, paint mixed so we can maybe let's say use that whatever a uh, green which I used here maybe I just add extra paint and make it uh, usable again will it work or it won't work it's hard to say because again uh, more paint you mix together a dirtier is your color but uh, working with let's call them dirty colors uh, it's a normal uh, process in uh, education in, in studying art and um, probably I don't know what's the number of uh, painting you should pass uh, working uh, not just working but really uh, working um, hard trying to understand how things are done then a later you start your palette gets cleaner get cleaner brighter has obviously uh, more of a, a good um, the mood I would say uplifting and so on I cannot see exactly how many people are watching. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, uh, my daughter, in fact, <laughs> was also uh, watching what I'm teaching, and she wrote that I'm uh, I'm daughter. So it's not me; it's my daughter upstairs. She is also watching my uh, webinar with her uh, boyfriend and uh, she's saying hello to all of us okay so um, again temptation to go and work on these details because there is always kind of a thought like maybe I'll forget if I won't do this now um, let's try to resist that temptation okay As you see, I'm not really working on my uh, purple colors, even though I think I can do that with a quite thick uh, paint application. And uh, pretty much same with some of the highlights which I have here. So edge of the house, I will work on it now as well. And I need some, let, me, let my eyes rest just a few minutes. And I think I can now uh, start working with my flat, which I used uh, in the beginning. So I think I have here a few spots which I would like to uh, really work with. Uh, work you know I have maybe I want to use a little bit of yellow ochre I don't have to but you know uh, since cadmium lemon is just crazily yellow and uh, of course I can use alizarin 
crimson now to mute it down yeah maybe I got it right maybe so this is kind of like a that color which is complex warm almost a gray And this area is uh, warm enough. So now we have a feeling this is actually white, uh, white uh, wall, which uh, gets all this reflection. And uh, you know my. Yes, my uh, camera shows it uh, the photograph quite darker, and what I, I see, you see on my on my table much darker. But I, you know, I'm teaching here just to give you an idea. It doesn't. It's not really so. Um, like you need to follow every word. Because again, I'm uh, here and I'm getting distracted by situation. And I'm glad to talk about something else. So, you know, this is not our kind of class. Um, let's say when we, what we do on uh, during online courses or workshops. Mm, absolutely not the same as you all understand. Of course, I'm very, very glad that uh, we're doing this. So now I'm trying to add a few little details here and there. Just trying to, uh, you know, I did not, yeah, trying to make it look closer to what we see down there. Trying not to uh, get a lot of colors from my head because, especially when you're outside in paint why you would get colors from your head because you see all that variety of course when paid from photograph it's i would say it's some sort of it's easier on one side because color variety is uh, kind of limited but it's not as exciting as when we really work and see all those colors all those colors which create real shining effect yes let's say color of this um, wall I mean the, this fence it's not like that no even on photograph is different even though on my painting it looks let's leave it like that why not but I will try to do that correct I want to learn with in all of in every painting I create right colors it's not that I don't have any like a fantasy and no like imagination at all no I have imagination but uh, but when I have a source of information like why I would um, I don't think it's it's I don't think it's boring uh, working in a realistic manner it's I think that's that's absolutely great Yeah, with my limited palette, this color doesn't seem to be a right. Um, but 
but I'm glad I'm glad that we got together and uh, we can work on this little imitation of a uh, field study and, and I want it like to be to take maybe about 40 minutes in my classes uh, I teach that it should take somewhere between maybe 40 minutes to an hour or so when we work on like those multi steps there's like three steps uh, to help us uh, to work on final on the, the, the main painting I always say it's worth doing it it's worth uh, spending those like that an hour and a half mm, because so I have my purple now because you save a lot of time you because you warmed up you see when you start working on your main canvas you see and you went through mistakes you went through uh, decision making you, you went through like a lot of uh, things it's like you, like you studied in college and then you go to work imagine you everything should be learned just like when you built a building and if you did some mistake the building fell and crushed and uh, that that would be crazy so why we do uh, same thing in when we when we paint that's that that would be great oh that would be absolutely wrong yeah I'm I'm watching actually what uh, what you see there on my uh, smaller like, telephone screen because I can see my uh, my communication with all of you whoever writes and I, as always I really appreciate when people write uh, where they're from and you you do so I think it's exciting and exciting for me too and you of course you remember that is why uh, you did so so now uh, I'm trying to find right color for the lilac themselves and of course I cannot work with the entire color variety at, at, at once so I work with the cooler colors which are like in deeper uh, shadow here and when I do those uh, flowers like these candles um, I try to group them and I group them based on my knowledge of composition as well obviously you cannot just spread them um, chaotically everywhere there's a little feeling and when I look at the view I, I I catch that feeling you know I I paint those which are there and um, and maybe avoid those which are there too but uh, do not fit my feeling of composition so alizarin crimson uh, some yellow yellow ochre actually helps a lot and uh, ultramarine blue oh no of course uh, at one point it's it's good probably to take a smaller like smaller size brush and start uh, placing oh you know we didn't do a sky yet sky color is uh, pretty off and I need more of white paint because I'll be going pretty with pretty a thick application of it So not all my paints are back. Oh, I have some white here. I'm sorry if you cannot hear me very well. It's um, again. That paint doesn't.
yeah this blue looks good and in fact uh, my sky uh, was like that in the morning again photography uh, when we talk about blue colors quite often incorrect quite often incorrect so I will I just want to add paint I don't want to uh, leave that paint so thin um, and uh, color wise it's more on green side uh, sky quite often on green side because um, it's closer to color of cerulean um, like a lot unless you will look at sky and zenith and of course my mix will be more on it's not gonna be as clean but the value wise I think we're getting closer I'm trying my best to get the right color down there and of course now I'm start I not anymore trying to cover my entire canvas um, Pretty much covered mostly I'm just I'm here working on my okay so I think if I uh, get now my uh, smaller brush I will do a few things first uh, my far distance trees I don't know why I work on them I want to do it's a little softer edges I want to add some perspective and then uh, maybe branches at once we need to get to them and they are kind of brownish and greenish and quite often I like to do my branches from the bottom just camera above my canvas do not let me to work with long enough yes if this is uh, our field study definitely I would not worry much about the um, kind of like a special lines and so on uh, are them exactly right because what I want to get from from uh, real view are colors and correct uh, value um, balance that's it and uh, main feeling of composition of course if I don't have I, I don't any I don't have a good idea of composition I may maybe exclude not to include some of objects which definitely uh, then you will think oh why I did not paint them why I did not do that corner so now we have few uh, branches which are stick out you know the lilacs uh, they their branches not always look healthy it get dried often And now my greens. Yes, uh, my palette doesn't look uh, perfect at this moment. But I am uh, very eager now to use a thicker paint application. And if color is correct, I'm really uh, place those dabs. Excited when the texture comes out well enough to. Now I can uh, work and dance around those flower uh, clusters.
Yes, uh, when I focused on uh, my work, it's really not so easy to to talk, especially now. I really uh, try to do uh, right good decisions. And yeah, I would think that's most uh, difficult part of this painting. Of course, is this a lilac bush? No, the value is wrong. Value is wrong. Lilacs, for some uh, reason, are a very good model uh, for colors. Let's say if the value wise, I took maybe two light purple here. And I add there two nice strong uh, colors mixed with white. It's uh, ultramarine blue and and alizarin. They look great. And you work on texture. They are kind of like there is no uniform uh, shape of these uh, flowers. So that's it's absolutely uh, beautiful and uh, good absolutely a great example I, I hope I have here good enough uh, feeling of light so what I want to uh, fin uh, getting close to finishing grass a little bit warmer than the lilacs like this uh, shadow extending and then yeah it's like we lost I lost a little bit of a contrast I have now, uh, yeah, I cannot really bit my hands. I always for you're doing here something which has to be done later. If I don't do those corrections of colors and values now, then when? No, now is the time. Try not to over mix your paint. So your brush strokes look much better when they're uh, separate one from another. And um, there is a little corner of this light st uh, strip which has a little bit of yellow ochre. So um, I think this area still needs a little bit of more attention and I think we'll be finishing uh, soon enough. I'm, yeah, I'm feeling that I lack that um, contact with you when I have camera showing me. And Now I think uh, my background trees here needs a little bit of attention. So now you can, uh, to create full strength of color, you can go with a thick paint. Most important that you mixed the right one, 
which you think works well. And of course, uh, color, I mean, the paint is paint. It's not the color itself. It's just some sort of a mix of some substances, which we call pigment, because they have quite a strong uh, chromatic presentation. That's what, it, what the paint is. And uh, with the color as an optical phenomenon is it's kind of the perfect something which is like in from world of perfection i think i'm uh, good for now i'm pretty happy with my little less than hour uh long uh painting process so i will sign it and I think I'm good. So let's look again at my uh, field study and my painting. Yes. So uh, if I go outside, let's say if I did that, not from my photograph, but from direct observation, I'd be happy to have it done in 30, 40, 45, 50 minutes. And I don't think it's, uh, a lot uh, difficult to do so. I'm sorry for the uh, values again on my uh, screen since it's not cal it got discalibrated when I was away. Uh, so the values, let's say, of the shadow here and uh, of the sky is not as I see on my like with my own eyes in studio. But anyways, it was so great to be with you. And um, again, that's presented to you by confidentartist.com. And I am very uh, looking forward for a big future of uh, that art school, which I am building up a little by little. And uh, for YouTube channel, if you have not subscribed, please uh, do so. And what else can I tell you? Everything was good. I'm so glad that uh, we uh, worked together uh, that I really um, can share my skills and uh, knowledge online or live. Thank you for those who have ever been taking my live classes. And if you follow me on YouTube, I hope that's uh, extra bonus. And my approach to teach to teaching is uh, formed now. And uh, so you will see uh, getting like one link after another as uh, to build a big chain which will will keep you uh, kind of uh, confident that you're going to the uh, I mean you can follow this uh, chain you can follow these links towards the uh, good result a good painting which brings you a lot of joy and also lets you uh, to I mean this approach is supposed to let you to see your own mistakes and become a great artist from good artists so these lessons, if you share them, if you share this knowledge to other people, I'll be twice, four times happier. Okay, thank you. It was great uh, to have you all here. And and um, we'll see you hopefully next Thursday in my regular uh, studio environment or if weather permitting uh, outside. <laughs>